When Kanye West tweeted, I like how Candace Owen thinks, my initial response was, so do I, Kanye, so do I. And I'll tell you exactly why, because it has nothing to do with the politics and everything to do with the mindset that makes a winner. So, this is going to be quite a bit of a personal story, one that I generally am not very open about, but I think it's about time to crack it open just for you guys to articulate my point. So bear with me on this one. It's a tough one. At any rate, uh, I my family broke very early on when I was a little kid. My, uh, my father got very sick, and then eventually he died, leaving my mom as a single mother with my older sister, then myself as the oldest brother, and my four younger brothers. So raising six kids on her own. Well, needless to say, she became a welfare migrant. And yes, those do exist, and I've known quite a few. Running from country to country trying to get the best possible deal she could get to uh, raise her kids. Now, needless to say, as a result of that, I've known several different welfare systems, including those in Scandinavia, and I've known welfare kids in other Scandinavian countries as well. And I know a lot of people like to just paint that as, as the bastion of everything that is beautiful and virtuous and woo, socialism and all that stuff, but it is anything but. Now, needless to say, I'm not going to just bash all of them because, you know, there are some things that some of them have done better and worse than others. And, and even within those societies, um, but quite frankly, I can see why, for instance, uh, the uh, psychological literature and the statistics as far as uh, father absences in families, why that is producing uh, the results that they are. Because I'm just like, I'm, I'm looking at the data, I'm just like, yeah, you know, from first hand experience, I can very easily see that. And just to give you a contrast, all from my own personal experience, I've lived in one inner city area where they would just toss in all these uh, single mothers, all these welfare mothers, and also welfare families where the, the family unit was intact or people were still together, but the parents had substance abuse. So the few father figures that were there weren't really reliable father figures. We had very few actual functional people and functional relationships uh, for us as kids to to actually take our inspiration for from and, and sculpt us by. So it really was um, a very all over the place type of uh, community and atmosphere. And there was really not much of a follow up from the authorities. So a lot of the kids that I remember from back in those days, you know, many of them are no longer alive and in my early 30s, but present or they have drug issues or they're Quite frankly gone very few of them statistically uh to to what i've managed to keep up with and uh, track of very few of them have uh, not had severe issues in their lives and actually managed to develop somewhat coherently so there's that and to contrast that then of course we moved out of that situation thankfully which uh, was probably the best thing that could have happened to us at the time and we went to another country and to a countryside location. Now, what they did over there was very interesting. They actually uh, paid some you know, families, uh, and, and in my case, uh, the parents of uh, uh, this guy in my class, to actually take us and foster us um, every other weekend or, or every third weekend just for our mom to get some rest and for us to actually be able to be a part of a functional uh, family or functional household unit, if you will. And uh, yeah, that was probably some of the best stuff that uh, could have, at least for, for my development in my life. Um, my, my friend's father was a huge influence on me throughout my teens. And uh, the work that he put in then, even though I didn't always understand it at the time, throughout my 20s, uh, that started to manifest itself and become very evident, leading to a tremendous amount of gratitude on my end towards him and also other prominent men and uh, great inspirations that I managed to sculpt my masculine self from. Not just in there, but also other great men that I've known, you know, hitherto since. So at any rate, I can definitely see that case and uh, definitely see the case for why uh, 
these big um, welfare projects, if you will, those big neighborhoods that are just uh, dysfunctional households or families or employed, you know, this is this is not good. Um, it's definitely definitely see it from from all my experience that if people manage to be a, a little bit more blended and mixed up yeah you know it, it can be a little tricky you know you you will at, at times probably get some bullying in schools because so and so's family cannot afford all the new cool stuff that so and so's family uh can afford but quite frankly personally from my own experience i would rather have that i would rather want to deal with the bullying in childhood and you know get the psychological help and the help from teachers and and those who can and to just address that than to be stuck in a neighborhood where there's perhaps less bullying but a lot less that you can take from as a, a child trying to orient itself in the world and sculpt yourself for the future as an individual so you need to be building that um, and and i can see that there are, are um, there are threats and conflicts and, and difficulties in, but on you know both of these modes yeah you can you can get along more easily with your peers on one end but you might all fail as peers or all you know fall into disaster while in the other yeah you you might have a rough time getting along with your peers but you have some sort of foundation upon which you can then construct yourself and figure out who you are as an individual so that's that aspect of it now let's go to the little you know a little bit to the political aspect of it so throughout my teens uh of course you know having come out of all of this we have especially often at times when elections were about to come some prominent left-wing politicians coming through and you know sitting around there have probably picked out my mom statistically if, knowing that oh there's a woman there with five kids votes so um yeah so they would come and they would sit at our kitchen drink her coffee and just hear her story out, her hardship, and just fill her with all of this. Yeah, you know, you, it's your right. The government's supposed to take care of this, and, you know, it's it's the law, and it's the Constitution, and, you know, whatever, you know, all these kind of things. Just uh, just really filling her, her up with this, oh, you know, the world is against you, and the government's not doing their job, and they're just, uh, you know, trying to, I don't know, you know, you guys off of the face of the earth or whatnot, but at least it, it's it was sad to watch because uh i remember especially throughout my uh my early teens you know this was a titan still is i i absolutely love admire and respect my mother for the work she did she broke any and all odds throughout her entire life that i will never face and and did the work that would be scientifically impossible with quite admirable prestige so there's that but yeah at any rate so this i, I just watched these uh people coming through with their uh, agendas and just gradually uh, just breaking the spirit well i'm not going to just accuse them of that Obviously, a lot of things affected her, and and through the course of her life, and, and through the course of raising all of us, have broken her, uh, worn her out. Naturally, this is an insane job that no one would expect anyone to actually accomplish. So, of course, but still, I, I do think that this played a role in in terms of uh, at least, f you know, planting the seed for some sort of uh, growing paranoia or suspicion, or you know, some kind of bad thoughts bad less constructive and counterproductive uh mentality at times that uh, i do believe actually factored in and have uh made it more difficult for her even since um since she completed the task of getting all of us out of the house now there so yeah so there are those things and uh then you know of course having grown up with all of this poverty welfare and politicians coming through uh, lecturing us about how we're victims and wronged by society and everything everybody else is uh, supposed to be responsible especially the government and you know those bastards in control are not doing their job so vote for us you know having gone through all of this i of course then became an adult 
And what do I hear then? What is the first thing I hear? The first thing I keep hearing is your opinion doesn't matter. Why? Because you're a man. You have male privilege. Not too much, you know, in my late teens, early 20s. Not quite that much. But post-08, when gradually um, the, the, the current left, as we know it, uh, started to become more prominent. And all this male bashing, because, of course, uh, everything that led to the 08 crisis was all a pro product of how men govern. And because men run the world and we need more feminine governing and, and feminine uh, approach to finance or business or whatnot, all that started to take on. And then, yeah, of course... You don't have a, a voice because, you know, you're you're a privileged man. You know, you've had everything handed to you. I'm like, wait, why are the same people who back just a few years ago when I was a teenager told me, oh, you guys are victims, victims, victims. And now they're telling me, oh, no, because you're a man. You've had everything handed to you. You're privileged, privileged, privileged. I'm just like, there's a dissonance here. So, yeah, so, of course, that was, I think, one of my biggest red pill moments right there this was very early on um say 2009 10, 11 2008 through 2000 is when i was really waking up to this stuff started reading into uh economics a lot more uh, picked up the entire libertarian canon and you know some other um more social democratic I've, and i've read some uh some books and uh, you know other along the lines but, but yeah you know i just started to realize that there's a whole lot more to the world and also i very quickly realized when i saw this dissonance right there you've been telling me throughout the span of seven years you've been telling me that i'm a victim and then that i'm privileged first thing i decided i'm not gonna accept either one of them labels whatsoever and, and and this was probably the greatest decision that i made for myself when i decided that it is not your duty or your right to call them and it is not your duty nor your right to call me privileged it is for me to decide and quite frankly i decide that i am neither so i pretty much decided that um Whatever I produce in my life, I'll take credit for. I will not let anybody tell me that something that I do own and believe that I've worked hard for is a product of privilege. No, it's a product of my life. And so are my failures. That is the only way that I can learn from my failures, my mistakes, uh, my misfortunes, is that I can own them. And even, even when it's not too obvious whether I own them or not. No, the more that I can allow myself to own, the more I can learn from. So even things that maybe weren't my fault, if I can find any way to make it my fault, not in a way that I'm bashing myself, but in a way that maybe something I did, I could have done better or different. You know, I'm already introspecting and looking back and, and learning. And you know that's one of the most important things and, and most valuable tendencies that I've, I've cultivated within myself. So, yeah, now I can say I am my own man. I own the good things I accomplish. I own my mistakes, misfortunes. And it is, those are my lessons to learn. And it's my responsibility to learn them. And uh, also, I am not a victim. Even if the whole world would, was against me, even if it is against me, you know, I don't care. Maybe the whole world is against me. Maybe the whole world are against some of us and not against others. You know what? I don't care. Even if the whole world is against me, I'm not going to just ask for permission. No, I'm going to go out there and do everything. I'm going to pursue the life that I want to pursue. And if I find something interesting, I'm like, hey, I want to do that. Yeah, you know, until someone says, Whoosh! really, really roughly, I'm just going to be gunning for it. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, you know, there are, uh, definitely are thresholds and big hurdles to overcome. And, uh, you know, I don't care if they're uh, 
institutionalized or if it's you know if you could ever say that it's the culture here or the culture there you know what if if i'm in a place where i don't believe that this is the venue for me or if i believe that a hurdle is just too big to overcome i look around where is another venue that i can find you know if if i believe that a place is just institutionally barred against me then you know what you guys don't deserve what I can the value that I can create here so fuck all of you guys I'm out that's my take and yeah I also get that it's not all that easy to um to just pick up and leave and go somewhere else but that's why that's what we build friendships and connections for once you cultivate this mindset you'll start to see that the your friendship and your relationships become different the people around you become different people and this is the hardest part I, I find about development as a human being, growing as a human being, because you change. And, uh, you know, you had good friends at some point that were a part of who you were back then and loved them. And then, you know, you gradually just either drift apart or you have a falling out because all of a sudden they develop in one way and become something. You develop in another and become something totally different and you, you don't really click anymore but you know it's a part of it um, but eventually if you cultivate a mindset that just becomes this in unstoppable force that just drives you know and yeah you know sometimes life's gonna beat us down and we're gonna be down on our knees and we're gonna get a little um just a little passive for a bit not quite be on our game and and sometimes we need to reorient ourselves a little bit reinvent ourselves and and uh, yeah we can you know we can stagnate for a, a little bit or seem like we're stagnating while we're figuring this out but just as long as you you know if you find yourself not quite knowing what do i want to do next or where to move on from here as long as you're, you're either feeding your mind or working your body or any of these things just just trying to somehow as you're trying to figure this out or stuck in this bit of a limbo, you know, at least try and work on some aspects of yourself. Pick up another five or 10 books and get inspired or, you know, at least do something, try things out, you know, several odd jobs here and there. And I keep falling back on, on odd jobs here and there when I need, you know, to just take a break from my mind and uh, rediscover or reorient myself. And, figure out what to do next and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you shouldn't be so full of yourself that oh no you know i'm, I'm in my upper 20s i don't know this kind of shit work oh and it's uh get over yourself the healthiest thing you can do for yourself in my humble opinion as a human being is to get the fuck over yourself yeah you know pick up whatever gig pays your bills uh it's your free time to work on yourself and then eventually you, you stumble onto something that goes makes you go uh, oh, I'm going to go for that. And uh, that's how progress happens. It's definitely those kind of transitions, I think, uh, in some way, shape, or form happen in everybody's life. I'm not dictating this to you guys as, hey, you know, you should all do what I do. I'm just giving you what I have found that worked for me and also share the experiences that actually make me connect to some of the things that, that Candace herself is saying. and, and other people have said and also matches with what a lot of the uh the uh, literature the scientific literature is producing on both sides of the ocean in europe and, and in the states and, and all over the place some uh there are some universalities to these things uh, uh well i for one from my own experience can see why so yeah i uh i figured i'd, I'd just share this stuff Hopefully it speaks to you, maybe it doesn't, but at any rate, um, you know, it's, no one should, and this is, again, my, nobody should dictate to you, tell you what you're, doesn't matter if it's victim or privilege or whatever, if you want to own any of these labels, you know, does it do you good? That's the first question. If, if you believe that it does you good to, the label that you're just privileged 
you think that's going to make you do something extraordinary and destructive in this world, you know, by all means, own it. Same thing with the victim label. If you think that, you know, just owning the label of being a victim is going to help you do something extraordinary and great in this world, by in this world, I mean for yourselves or for the world at large or for anything or anyone. You know, you think labels that other toss your way are going to be your road to greatness, then, you know, by all means, go ahead. I just don't believe that anything that, that isn't something you craft for yourself and you go out there and do and own at all costs. And there are going to be costs. And, and you know, they're, they're tough to pay. They're, it takes guts to take risks. And it, it takes endurance to pay the prices of everything that stumbles everything that that falls in your path you know the uh mishaps the mistakes the the stumbling and falling you know it's it takes a lot of endurance emotionally mentally physically to to pay these prices again and again and again it's fucking rough i know but ever so much more rewarding ever so much more humbling you know what even when you just like what am i doing here middle of the night my time talking to a random cat about these things even when you're stuck in that you're just like you know what it's life it's humbling nobody said it was supposed to be easy and if they did bastard was freaking lying shame on that person yeah anyways this is my rant for now just uh really some of it inspired you and moved you as it has well not just inspired and moved me but kept kept me alive Without this development, I would have been lost a long time ago. I'll tell you that. 30 plus years clocking, here I am. Indestructible bastard. Not going down without a fight. Neither should you. Viking out.